Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle a Man of Gondor. Now this was requested a while back, actually, and uh, with the re-release of the Lord of the Rings, uh, what are they calling it now, Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game, it seemed like it might be timely. These guys are really cool, and they're probably one of the stalwarts of the setting. You know, these are so cool. I love the men in Minas Tirith. They're luckily really simple to paint as well. So without worrying too much and fluffing around, let's get stuck in. Paints will be listed in the description below so you can follow along and let's have some fun. Now because the predominant color on the miniature is going to be silver, I've base coated him with a primer of Lead Belcher. Then I've given him just a quick coat of Lead Belcher out of the pot to make sure that that base coat is going to be nice and smooth. That's important. Anywhere where the majority of the color is going to be your primer, you want to find a color match and just give a quick once over to make sure that everything you're going to work from is going to be smooth and even. So what we're going to start with, because we want that darker finish, we're going to go straight to an on oil for the whole miniature. So let's crack that open and we're straight off into the hard stuff. Grab your shade brush and just go nuts. Okay, all you need to do is be filling in all of the armor. Uh, don't worry too much if you hit skin areas or anything like that. Just make sure that we've got all that nice shading done in one fell swoop. Now with that dry, we've got some shading and this actually helps out a lot, I find, with these uh, Men of Gondor because it makes the rest of the details a little easier to spot. So I'm just grabbing myself a little bit of Bugman's glow here and we're gonna go straight onto his face. I can't see a thing because I haven't got my glasses on, whoops. Now with these guys, if we travel down his face, it's probably the easiest way to get a base coat on. And if you happen to hit, oh no, his shield, don't worry too much because we're gonna highlight those areas and we can cover over any little mistakes we make. Now I'm gonna grab my Cadian flesh tone and we're gonna finish off his face. Anywhere that you find you're likely to make a mistake, you're better off to do this early on where you can tidy up your, uh, your other layers a little more easily. Now I think I've got too much paint on my brush. But just take your time. Ooh. And then just a little Kislev flesh. We're just going to do the bottom of his chin. Ooh, shaky hands. And we'll try and touch in that bottom lip. I'm not going to do much else than that, to be honest. And then because I have had a couple of minor disasters, Let's just get him with a little bit of lead belcher again, and I can fix up around the sides of his helmet. Now it comes time to paint the black on these guys. And for men in Minas Tirith, there is a lot of black. Okay, now I've got some flat black from Vallejo. You can use a bad and black quite happily. Now for painting his shield, I've watered it down a little more than I normally would. You can see it's a little bit translucent. But I wanted to just run very easily off my brush. And all I'm going to do is quickly go around sort of the outline of the tree and try and skip the branches. If I do hit any, it doesn't matter too much. We can tidy those up if we fancy, but for your stock infantry, it's not going to matter too much. And once that first layer is dry, you can see in the larger areas, it's very easy to just quickly bop back in and flatten them out. So let's take my time here. I'm going to fill in the tree. And then I'll do all of the other black areas. Uh, grab yourself some reference images. There are tons. It's Lord of the Rings. Now, like I said, there is a lot of black and some of it overlaps. Now, there are a lot of ways you can highlight black to make it look a little more interesting. But what I want to create here is the impression of layers. So I'm going to do my bottom layers with highlights of Eshin Grey. So we'll do his kettle. Just a few... And you can be quite blocky with these highlights, to be perfectly honest, because once this dries, it's going to look a lot darker. We're just increasing sort of the visible depth. All right, so just a little of that on there, and don't forget the front of it too. And if you want to highlight his boots, you can do it with Ashen Grey as well. Now then for our lighter areas, so the next one's up, like his straps and what have you, I've got Skaven Blight Dinge. Now you could use any old gray, um, as long as there's kind of two layers to it. So you see, from a distance, they still look black, but when you get a little closer, there's a bit of visual interest and you can tell which bits are supposed to be what. So any straps now, skip and blight dinge, 
And if he's got gloves, you can just blop some on the back of his knuckles there too. Now we can add a little color. And I've got here Retributor Armor. We'll just do the cross guard on his sword. So I can get that to the right angle. And this little bit down on his scabbard too. Uh, most of the movie shots I've seen tend to have this in gold or a brassy kind of color. Um, and I think it looks quite good on the miniatures too. Now it's time to pick how you want to highlight your armor. Or actually, you should have done that earlier. <laughs> You can dry brush these guys with a little bit of Necron Compound, but that I would have done before doing all of the black and other details, because it allows you to be a little bit more messy. But I'm going to show you something that I don't normally do, and I'm going to layer over this armor. This will give you a much smoother effect. It's really good if you've got uh, plate mail or something. Maybe you've got, uh, what's the word, clerics or paladins or what have you. So I've got just a little bit of Iron Breaker with some water. And all I'm going to do is take my time and just fill in some larger areas, like these plates on his legs here, to give me a little bit more, a little bit more shine um, around his chest piece too. Just dodging some of the tree, but you can kind of tickle the tree <laughs> with the tip of your brush, and very quickly get a highlighted effect on that too. So I'm going to go around now, and all of the areas that I want to shine a little more. Now with this tree, if you hold your brush almost flat against the, uh, the shield, you can very quickly batter on just a little bit of silver on some of the bits that you might have gone whoops on earlier. It's not perfect, but it's quick. And it's relatively simple. Now to be perfectly honest, that's him done. You could highlight the edges of the black on a shield, you could highlight his, his black gear a slightly different way. You could do more. But I like, for the simple expedient of getting bodies on the table, boots on the ground, this is a really simple way of painting these men of Gondor. And those armor bits, they will work on anything. Now the real trick to these guys comes once they've got their bases, because suddenly, like I say all the time, context is important. And he goes from being a fairly plain silver warrior to a hero of Gondor charging across the Palinor to engage the forces of Sauron and defend Minas Tirith. Now luckily we don't work for Weta Workshop, and our work doesn't have to be perfect, but he'll do the job, you know, as part of a larger army, I think they look really cool like this. You could go ahead and dab a little bit of uh, Rikon Flesh Shade into his face for example, you could highlight the grey differently, uh, it's up to you. But as far as getting boots on the ground, this does the job, and I quite like how they come out, to be honest. So as ever, hopefully something was interesting to you there, guys. You can get in touch, either drop a comment in the old box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked down there too. So, thank you very much for your time, and you guys enjoy the rest of your day.